Hi, in this video we're going to build on the skills we learned in the last lesson and we're going to create a handle for this hammer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut a hole in the bottom of the hammer so that we can fit our handle inside it. So I'm going to click on this surface, this flat surface, and I'm going to come up here to the top left and start a new sketch. So I'm now in a new sketch and I'm going to use a sketch tool that we haven't covered yet. It's called Offset Entities. So up here at the top, over here in the Sketch tab, you can click on Offset Entities. And with this face selected, it's going to offset the uh, lines that are on the edge of the face automatically. So as you could see here in the preview, it has offsetted them outside. You can see that yellow preview. But I could also hit the reverse button and that's going to make them go inside now. So I'm going to leave this at 0.1 inches uh, for this example and I'm going to actually I'm just going to raise this up to an eighth inch and I'm just going to hit the green check. So what that did is it automatically created sketch lines based on the, um, what I want to call the edge here of this face. So now with this uh, line created, with these lines in the sketch created, I can create a cut extrude and cut down into the hammer to create a recess for us to place our handle. So I'm going to come up here to features and I'm going to click on extruded cut. And so now you could actually see the preview for cutting into the part. So I'm going to click down here on my datum to look at it, this part from the side, from the right. And I'm going to just manually move this around to see where I want to put it. Uh, for this example, though, I want to take it a step further. Instead of just typing in a value here in the uh, feature manager, I'm actually going to come up here to where it says blind and I'm going to set an end condition. So if I do up to surface, it's going to be a cut that comes up to a surface. So let me show you. I'm going to click on this and the second thing I'm going to click on is the surface that I want to extrude up to. So I'm going to click on this face and now I'm extrude cutting up to that face. So if this face moves, marked in pink, if that face moves, then my cut is going to move also. That's definitely something to keep in mind if you change this feature. So I'm going to hit OK. And as you can see, our recess has been made. Oh, but you know what? That's not deep enough. Maybe I want to change that. So I'm going to go back to my cut extrude and I'm going to edit the cut extrude and instead of choosing this face, maybe I want to choose the top plane instead. So now I've chosen the top plane and you can see that the cut extrude now goes to that plane. So that looks good. All right, so with this profile made, um, we're going to use this cutout to add our handle. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to save. And so that's what you do when you want to cut down in, into a part up to a surface. So you could actually see if I select this uh, face, I can come down here to the bottom left and click on the datum and I could see how far up the cut has been made. But oftentimes in hammers, the handle actually cuts through the entire part. So we're going to try that. We're going to go back and we're going to edit the feature and we're just going to come up here to the end condition. And I'm just going to click on through all. So now you can see it's cutting through the entire part. Okay, great. So let me save this. And so now we're going to go and create another part. 
but I need to mark down some dimensions here so that I could use them to create the new part with. And so there's this thing in SolidWorks, um, it's called adaptivity. It allows you to um, link sketches and sketch dimensions to a new part. That's a little bit more on the advanced side. And so uh, I, I really wanna just show the basics for right now. So um, we're not gonna go do that. We're actually just gonna take a simpler approach to it. I'm just going to edit the sketch that I made and I'm just gonna set up some dimensions here, some reference dimensions that I can use to uh, reference off of for the sizing. So this here, it's um, 0.481. Let, let me take a dimension from here to here. And that's gonna be 0.831 for the whole slot. And now let me make another dimension here, from here to here, and that's going to be 0.53 inches. And then I wanna do um, one more here for the radius. And the radius is 0.175 inches. So, that should be about enough information um, to go forward. So I'm going to exit the sketch and save it one more time. And we're gonna come up here, Control N or click up here at the top. And we're going to start a new part. And I'm going to start this on the top plane. I'm gonna come up here and hit sketch and I'm going to click on the center rectangle, which is the default rectangle. I'm going to click on that and drag out um, a shape that's 0.53 inches. By 0.831 inches. And that came up in millimeters because down here on the bottom right, um, the units should be changed to inch pounds and seconds. So I'm gonna do that. And that way I can come in here, I can pull out a smart dimension and make it 831 and 0.53. And I'm going to uh, put the radii now in here. So um, I'm gonna do this in the sketch. Um, I've showed it in the past how to create a fillet. And so a fillet is a feature while a radius or a sketch fillet is in the sketch. They both accomplish the same task. Um, oftentimes it is better practice to, to create a fillet instead of doing the um, sketch fillet. So I think I'm actually going to um, take that approach. So I'm gonna exit the sketch and so I'm going to do um, an extrusion now. And I'm going to bring this up um, to the height of the hammer. So let's see um, what that is. If I click here and then I also select this face, I can come up here to the top left and click on measure. And that's going to allow me to measure the dimension, which um, appears to be uh, 1.5 inches. So I'm going to go back. Okay, now uh, we're back in this part. I'm going to make this uh, 1.5 inches. So that's the height of the part. And um, as I mentioned, I'm going to click on fill it and I'm gonna add a uh, fillet to the size that it needs to be. This fillet is to be 0.175, which is what we set in the cutout of the hammer. So as you can see, it's a very simple shape, but this is the um, inside cutout, if you will. So I'm just gonna 
um, save this part. I'm going to call it hammer handle. I'm going to save that. Okay, great. So from here, um, we want to continue our handle design. Um, this sketch was created on the top plane. So if I click on top plane, you can see where the sketch is located. It's right on the origin, which is what you always want to start with. Um, so you can see that the center of the part is on the origin. If I look at it from the front, you can see the origin is, is directly in the center of the part, just like we want. So from here, I'm actually going to design on the top plane, but on the underside of the top plane. And the way I'm going to do that is by starting a sketch actually inside the first sketch we made. So we made this first sketch in order to extrude up, but I could actually use the same sketch and just extrude down. That way I'm designing a lot of my part all in the same sketch, which can be very helpful. So I'm going to right click and hit edit sketch. And uh, I, I'd like to add the reason why that's helpful to create a lot of features out of one sketch is because then you don't have a bunch of different sketches, multiple sketches, which can be very confusing. So I'm going to start another sketch and I'm going to create another rectangle on the outside of this one. So this one's going to be a little bit larger. Actually, I'm, I'm going to go back. I'm actually going to use the offset entities that we used before. So if I come up here, I'm going to click on offset entities, click on this line, this line, this line, and this line. The preview shows that it was offset inward. So I can come up to where it says reverse, where it says reverse here, you click on it and then it, it does the reverse of it. So I'm going to uh, make this, let's say 60 thousandths of an inch outside just for now. Uh, we can always change it later. So as you can see, I now have two sketches, but only one feature. I'm not including the fillet. So from here, I can actually um, start my next uh, extrusion from that sketch. So to, the way to do that is you have to right click where it says sketch and you're going to click on show here. Okay, so now my sketch is shown. And so I can come up here to extrude ball space and I can click on the sketch. And you're going to see that now the entire profile is selected, but it's, it's the wrong way. So like we learned in the last video, come up here, click on reverse direction. Now we're reversing the, rec the direction downward. So I'm going to make this handle, let's say, uh, 8 inches for now. As always, we can always change this value. And if you're wondering what merge result means, it means that it's going to merge whatever I create to the first body. That's this part. So if I uncheck that, this part, it's, it's going to be two parts, or not two parts, two bodies. It's going to be this body and this body. But so I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to hit OK. And here in the tree, if you look closely, it says right here, solid bodies, two of them. So if I click on this uh, plus sign, it shows fillet one, which is this part. It's always labeled by the last uh, feature that was made. But anyway, there's this body. And there's this body. There are two bodies here. They actually light up when you click on them. They light up in blue. So if I go, if I right click and I edit the feature, I'm right clicking on the feature and hitting edit feature, I can actually go and click on merge result and that's going to merge the two. Okay, now that the two bodies are merged. So I want to add fillets uh, to this part as well. So what I'm going to do is instead of creating a second fillet feature, which I can do by clicking on fillet and then, you know, coming in and adding the fillets, 
I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to take this fillet one that I made and I'm just going to drag it, click and drag it down. And it, when I drag it down, I'm dragging it past this feature. So th th this is something that's kind of crucial to understand. Um, in, the, in the feature manager tree, which we're looking at right here on the left side, you have all the features and sketches and everything that you've made all referenced right here. This is a control center for everything. This is Boss Extrude 1, Boss Extrude 2, the fillet, everything. And the order in which the features are, are put in this tree determines everything. So if I put the, this fillet, if I click and drag it in front of the first one, you're going to see that the fillet it's it's only created for this uh, feature so I can't when I click on this fillet and I try to edit the fillet the, the second body doesn't even come up because it hasn't been made yet you see it's everything is done in order so I'm actually gonna move this marker which is which is basically where the end of the part is. I'm going to move this up to boss one. So you see this blue line? You can take this and drag it down. You can drag it up. And what does that do? That moves what I want to call kind of like on YouTube where you can hit, you can kind of move around the slider to move to the beginning of the video, the end of the video. That's what this does. What this does is it moves your whole part everything, every feature you've done in the part, it moves it back and forth in the tree. To And if you move it to the first feature, then it's only going to show the first feature. If I move it down to show the second feature, it's going to show the second. If I move it down to show the third, it's going to show the, the third. Everything is done in order. So um, as I was saying, I could take a feature and I can move a feature down. I'm going to move this feature to the end of the part. That means that if I double click on this feature now, see, it now shows both bodies. Back when I had it in the middle, if you remember, it didn't show both of them. It's only going to show the one part. It's only going to show this body. But if I move the fillet to the end, it's going to show both. If I choose to edit it. Now I'm going to edit it because that's what I want to do. So I'm going to just click on this line, this line, this line, and this line in the back here. And I'm going to hit OK. And that is a very, very basic handle. I'm actually going to throw a really simple just ending feature here, a fillet and I'm going to zoom in and I'm pretty much just going to bump this up to the point where it, it's fully closed. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and leave it at that for now. And so it's a very basic design. It looks a little bit long, so I'm, I'm going to right click, edit feature, and I'm just going to change this to be seven or six for now. Just going to make a quick change to it. It a little bit longer, maybe six and a half inches. That yeah, looks about right. So I'm going to come up here and click save. Always very important. The larger and larger parts that you work with, with more sketches, it's just going to be a bigger file. It, there's going to be a bigger chance for it to fail or crash. So always be sure to just keep saving as a rule of thumb. Okay, great. So we have our handle now. And so um, we're going to leave it at that for this particular tutorial. And in the next one, I hope to show you how to actually connect the two parts in what we call an assembly, which is made up of parts. It's when you take a bunch of parts and you assemble them together.